just two very brief announcements. Again, that we they, they were in the earlier announcements. Our chapel, our Eucharistic chapel, will be closed at noon on July 3rd, so this Wednesday, because of the holiday. So from Wednesday noon on, the chapel will be closed. And then it'll reopen on Monday morning at 6 a.m., okay? Also, um, if you haven't already, and it's a, it's a great thing, and it, are the pig roast tickets on sale? You know, we've all had pork sandwiches, but it's a little different taste when it's in those pig roasts. So please, I, you know, it's not only a great tasting sandwich, but it, it, it also helps support our parish. So th thank you. You know, I, I'm sitting there listening to the reading. I was talking to Jerry about it. You know, I didn't even, and it wasn't even part of my homily, but I thought this in the second reading, it says, stop biting each other. I thought, what a way to put that. Because we all do it, don't we? It says, stop biting each other. What a great line for that. And that was in the, the second reading. Harry Jameson was a legendary salesman in the 40s and 50s. And they were talking about what made his success. Well, he said perseverance is really what fueled his success. And they said, you know, how many calls do you make before a prospect gives up? And he said, it depends on which one of us dies first. He also said, you know, he called on somebody 100 or 40 times before they actually end up buying from him. And the person said, I cannot help buying from him. His persistence has paralyzed my resistance. But you know, in this gospel today, Jesus is talking about that. How can we be a Christian to be a follower of Jesus? What's, what's it involved? What does it involve? And it's couched in a couple little things, but there's these spiritual principles that apply to all of us. And we all get caught up in some of these. And there's three of them. The first one is, you know, I want to be a follower. And he says to them, foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. What's he talking about? It doesn't seem to have any any notion of being a follower, but it does. He's saying in there, you know, at times being a follower, being a Christian, it's going to get uncomfortable. It's getting going to get comfortable. And what happens when it gets uncomfortable? We give up, don't we? We give up. The second one, he says, follow me. And he says, Lord, let me, let me go first and bury my father. It sounds very righteous and very good, doesn't it? Most probably, his father was still very young and, and fine. It was just a nice excuse. And I thought, you know, in our spiritual life and sometimes in all of our lives, we put things off, don't we? We put things off. What happens when we keep putting things off? We don't do it. We don't do it. And the last thing is, last follower, he says to him, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, if you, if you watch a farmer when they're plowing, and you're down in the Amish country, you see this, they are intently looking straight ahead because they have to guide that horse. If they look like that, it takes the horse off course. It takes the horse off course, so the, the, the lines would be all skewed. What Jesus, what's he saying there? He said, you know, we gotta look ahead. We gotta look ahead. But we carry so much behind us, don't we? We carry our grudges, we carry our bad habits, we carry situations or even people sometimes that we need to walk away from, don't we? We need to look ahead. Sometimes we need to leave the grudges, the habits, situations behind us, don't we? Look straight ahead and keep that plow going straight. 
John Wesley, who was the founder of the Methodist Church, I ran across an article that talked about one month of his life, and he wrote a, journey, a journal about it for one month. He said the, the month began in May, May 5th, in the morning he was asked to preach at a church. At the end of the service he was asked not to come back. That evening he preached at a different church. And the deacons met him at the door and said, please don't come back. The next weekend was May 12th. He was told again not to come back. The following weekend, which would be May 19th in the morning, the deacons had a special meeting again, and the elders of the church said it's not necessary. The services are no longer needed here. He was preaching on the street on Sunday evening on May 19th, and the police said, you're, you're disturbing the people. You need to leave. May 26th, he was preaching in a meadow, and one of the farmers with a very small group of people had some bulls released into the people to scatter them because he was annoying everyone. On June 2nd, so this is one month, in the morning, he was again asked to leave a church. That evening, he preached in a pasture, and 10,000 people showed up. Isn't that amazing? 10,000 people. But we would have given up on May 5th, wouldn't we? We would have given up on May 5th. And that's what happens in our spiritual lives, my friends, all of us. We take these excuses. Something gets uncomfortable, or we put things off. It happens, and we walk away. We walk away, don't we? Or we get so consumed with all this stuff behind us. We need to set the plow ahead, my friends, and persevere, don't we? We need to persevere, and we need to pray for that great gift. God bless you.